Okay, this video is going to cover ossification. Standards and objectives, pause and peruse. Okay, the growth of the skeleton. So it determines size and proportions of the body. So if our skeleton doesn't grow, that obviously affects our body size. It begins about six weeks after fertilization, so pretty early in the developing embryo. It ends around age 25, like the clavicle is one of the last bones to ossify around age 25. Same with some of the facial bones. Ossification is replacing other tissue with bone. That's how the growth happens. Calcification is depositing those calcium salts to give it strength. What are the requirements for bone growth? Well, we need minerals, especially calcium salts and, and phosphate. During pregnancy, a person loses bone mass because literally growing another human being. Vitamin D, it's vital for calcium metabolism. So calcium cannot be metabolized correctly without vitamin D. We need vitamin A and vitamin C. And then there's hormones like growth hormone, thyroid hormone, sex hormones that um, help the bones grow at different times. What about remodeling of bone? So in adults, about 18% of bone is remodeled every year. The protein and mineral components are removed and replaced. It's important so bones can adapt to new stress. So bones that are used more are going to get thicker. Bones that are used less are going to get thinner. So bones do respond to stress. So regular exercise is important. So weight bearing exercise when possible. Heavily stressed bones become thicker and stronger, but bones without stress can become thin and brittle. So you may think of stress being a bad thing, but it's really not. So after a few weeks on crutches, a bone can lose up to one third of its bone mass. Now, as you begin using that bone, it quickly um, replenishes that loss. But again, the loss still happens. Okay, true or false, bones are living tissue. What do you think? Well, it's true, bones can repair themselves, living tissue. They grow. What are some vitamins and minerals needed for proper bone growth? Do you remember what they are? Calcium, phosphate, vitamin D, vitamin A, and hidden vitamin C. Now let's look at the two types of ossification. We have intramembranous ossification. It's where bone develops from a fibrous membrane. So it forms the flat bones of your skull, the mandible, and the clavicle. So that's it. So skull, mandible, clavicle. Um, the ossification center is where ossification first begins. So the stem cells form a template of fibrous tissue. The stem cells become osteoblasts. And then the osteoblasts secrete that extracellular matrix and deposit calcium to harden the matrix, okay? So first it's a fibrous template and then it becomes bone. In endochondral ossification, this is where bone replaces hyaline cartilage. So instead of a fibrous membrane that it's replacing, it's hyaline cartilage. This is how most bones are formed, everything except for the skull, the mandible, and the clavicle. Chondrocytes are the cells that secrete um, cartilage, so they form a template. Then the matrix begins to calcify and the chondrocytes die. And then blood vessels work their way into the spaces. 
the osteoblasts build bone. So first that's gonna happen in the diaphysis. A secondary centers of ossification will form at the epiphysis. So again, this is why a developing fetus and a baby and a child have more bones than an adult because they haven't actually fused together yet. So we have one bone forming at the diaphysis and two separate bones forming at the epiphysis and then they will eventually join into a bone, but that doesn't happen until after birth. So endochondral ossification, bone replaces cartilage. We have a primary ossification site in the diaphysis secondary ossification uh, centers at the epiphysis, and then they will grow and meet together. The ends of the bone remain covered in cartilage, so some of the cartilage stays. There's that thin layer of uh, cartilage that remains, the epiphyseal plate, the growth plate, it separates the epiphysis and diaphysis. So a thin layer of that cartilage remains. So that's a remnant of how that bone was formed. The growth rate, again, controlled by hormones. The epiphyseal plate becomes the epiphyseal line in adults, but we've talked about this previously. This type of ossification occurs for most bones. What kind is it? Yep, it's endochondral. But how do bones grow in width? So we're kind of just addressing length. How do they grow in width? Well, that's a process called appositional growth. So what happens if the bones do grow in width, the cells of the periosteum develop into osteoblasts. Okay. They produce an additional bony matrix, so they lay down some bone. Uh, the new bone is deposited on the outside. And then osteoclasts clear out some of the inner surface so that our bones just aren't getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. So what happens is the medullary cavity increases in size. So new bone is laid on the outside. We clear out some of the inside. Okay, so that the bones don't become these super heavy um, bones that we are unable to move. And there you have it. That is ossification. And I hope that you learned something new today.